Members of Congress are on recess, but the political debate has shifted from Capitol Hill to their home districts. Voters are crowding town hall meetings, shouting down lawmakers and each other. All right, so this is video of a town hall meeting in Fresno last week. GOP Congressman Tom McClintock answered questions for hours. He spoke against sanctuary cities. He also said Obamacare needs to be replaced with something that works. The room was full of both supporters and opposers. This was my message to him was that, you know, uh, I want him out. I'm going to vote him out. They have a right for their for point of view. I have a right to express my point of view. We all have that right. The Trump administration is now asking for three more months of Obamacare until they figure out what to do with subsidiaries. And joining us now to talk about these raucous town hall meetings is Congressman Mark DeSaunier. Now, you've had a couple of meetings yourself. How would you describe them? I've had seven since, uh, since January, um, and they've been great, actually. Great turnout, seven, eight hundred people when you usually get 50 or 75. And now, there is a group out there called Indivisible, right. which is what many people are saying is key to these turnouts. Tell me a little bit about that. What are they doing to get people out? They're former Democratic congressional staffers, um, and they went through the Tea Party experience, so they're basically explaining how it can be done for people who are more progressive or Democrats. Okay, so what we have here is former congressional staffers pulling together tactics used by the Tea Party, and now, but they're aiming them at Republicans like Tom McClintock and others in California and across the country, turning out Democratic supporters to raise raucuses against Republicans. Yeah, they're not just targeting Republicans. That's what the news stories are for obvious reasons. But they're, ter they're aiming them at people like myself, people in the Bay Area who are Democratic and reflect and their views. And what's the message being shot to you? It's, it's a couple. It's hold you accountable, make sure you're doing everything you can from their perspective. So it's aggressive. Um, obviously, it's different from what my Republican colleagues are seeing in their districts. Okay, it's interesting. <clears throat> With the emergence of a group like this on the liberal side, some people thought that that was what hurt the Republicans, was that then their, their calls to action tend to be so far out that even Democrats becomes fearful. Well, this is a big group, and it's, it's organic, I would view, um, from my experience, and I've met with them. Um, it's the biggest thing you have to remember, Phil, is the largest group in the presidential election were people who chose not to vote who were eligible. So for me, the fact that more people are engaged, that's good. The danger is, again, is that we just replicate what the Tea Party did, in my view. We should be aggressive. They should be able to express themselves. But they should also, as your video said, uh, respect people who differ with them. Okay, well, you're in a safe district. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are not going to be facing a challenge. They're also showing up on Senator Dianne Feinstein's mm -hmm. doorstep and saying, is the line, don't cooperate at all with Trump? Resistance, resistance, resistance? Well, I think that's, there are people who feel that way. And there are people, who, as I feel, that you should oppose him vigorously when you disagree with him. Um, certainly the constitutional issues we should investigate. But you also have a rule of law, and you do it within that spirit. But if this group or this movement says don't, then are we going to just have further gridlock? Well, in, in California, you've got open primaries. So, you know, they could run. I'm in a safe district, but here you have people who might not think I'm liberal enough, which is hard to imagine. I tell my Republican colleagues in D.C. Um, but therein lies part of the challenge. But the really good news is you've got more people who are engaged. So we have to, we have to encourage that. And then, to your point, uh, people have to realize they can be passionate and, and strong, but they still have to be respectful. The cynic in me wonders who's financing this. That's a good question. You know, we know from the Tea Party that the Koch brothers now, years later, people like that were funding it. Um, that's to be determined. There are people who will say, oh, George Soros is... The founders are saying so far that that's not true. Where do you see this going? I hope where it's going is that people will stay engaged. As I said, the largest group of people did not vote for Trump or Clinton. They were the, did, the people who didn't chose not to vote. The people who felt that it didn't make a difference. Well, 60 percent of the eligible voters voted. So 40 percent of Americans decided it wasn't important enough to vote. Okay. What makes you think that this group is the group that didn't vote? You're, you're I'm, seeing I'm not, them. You're I'm not, seeing them. I'm not saying this group. Right. I'm saying the if, people that are showing. I'm the physically town hall seeing a, a thousandfold more people showing up at the town halls. They're engaged. They under, they're starting to understand what we do. Many of them do understand what we do. So that's all good. Yeah. I, if you're a Republican like Tom McClintock, you read the room and you see these people and you go, "Okay, you're the people that didn't vote for me and aren't going to vote for me," but. Uh, majority still voted for but, me. But that's our job is to listen, including, I mean, I, I was in elected office when the Tea Party people were coming. You have to listen to people who disagree with you and you have to explain yourself.
Listen to people that disagree with you. What a political concept. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh, maybe, who knows? Maybe it'll oh, catch on. Oh, the sky, the sky. <laughs> oh, don't be a cynic. It <laughs> oh, might it's work. It's la-la land all over. <laughs>